All right, okay, welcome to this uh, series of the Master Implementer interviews, right? So today, right, I have a very special guest, right? So I think most of you know that my audience usually, uh, we try to tailor it to entrepreneurs, to investors, but today, right, we have what we call, uh, to in my opinion, one of the LinkedIn experts, right, in Singapore. So whether you are an employee, uh, entrepreneur, right, for sure, right, this LinkedIn is a platform that you can definitely take advantage of. And that's why today I've invited Mike, right, Mike here, to actually uh, yes. to share with us some of his insights about LinkedIn and how we can maximize uh, to your process. So thanks for coming down to the, the interview, Mike. Thanks, 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 Mark. Yeah, yes. so uh, to get started, all right, can you just share a bit about your story and a bit about, I guess, your insights into the whole space right now? Like, people are uh, probably going to be curious, right? About whole so can you just share a bit about your story, where you get to where you are, and you can get started from there? Well, uh, I didn't take the, you know, conventional route of being uh, in business uh, when I was young. In fact, um, for the longest time, I didn't think that I would go into business. Okay. Uh, I never saw myself as a business owner, as an entrepreneur for, for that case. Mm -hmm. And so, um, along my life, I've always been very lost. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never really planned for what I wanted to do. And that was how I ended up, uh, after, my, uh, after I got my diploma, mm -hmm. I enlisted into national service. And the next thing I know, I was like, what do I want to do? I asked myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't even know what I wanted to study for my degree because my grades were not that good. So what happened next was I just took the easiest way out. I saw an opportunity and I actually signed on as a regular in the Air Force. Oh, so I spent okay. close to nine years, nine mm. years in the Air Force. Uh, so be before I, I took the step out, uh, but it was not a direct step out to be an entrepreneur. So this was what happened. About the fifth year when my contract uh, actually was up, uh, that means I no longer have a bond. Yep. That was when I decided that um, I want to do something else. Right? Mm. Uh, I was taking my degree part time. It was a finance degree. I started to develop a, mm. a interest an interest in finance. So mm. I took up a degree. So that was in 2013. 2013, okay. yes. So in 2013, uh, I started taking up that degree, mm. and around the mid of the year, I decided, okay, you know what? I'm young. I can do whatever I want. Let's just, uh, you know, just throw in my letter mm. and say that. Uh, I go and find a job in the finance sector. I'm yep. young, I can start from the bottom again. Right? Mm. Uh, so that was what I did. Uh, despite having uh, you know, no prior qualifications, my diploma was a biomedical science diploma. Nothing mm. to do with finance. Right? Mm. But I, I went for some finance courses, uh, learned how to trade, things like that. Right? Uh, and that helped me to learn a lot more about finance. I did a lot of self-study, but it was not reflected anywhere. Mm. And I was halfway through a finance degree. Right? And... I also had a lot of financial commitments at that point of time. I, had, uh, I was driving, so I had a car loan, you know, I had to pay for my studies, my, my degree. And what happened was I, I just decided, okay, let's just do this first, throw first and then see, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And what happened next was I had three months of notice period. Three months is quite a long time. Now. No yeah. employers will wait for three months, especially for someone like, uh, let's say, junior position, they could just get anyone. Yeah. So, when I attended, you know, at first I was quite relaxed. I, I, I was very, very confident, very cocky in, in uh, <laughs> yeah. really. What I did was I was telling, you know, I was telling myself that, you know, I can just go into any job. I'm, I'm willing to work hard. So I applied for a lot of jobs. I applied through job portals all the time. Every day I was sending more than 50 applications. Mm. I just sending and sending and sending. And throughout that three months, uh, I only went for two interviews. The first interview was with a recruiter who was, you know, telling me about how impressive my profile is despite having uh, no um, qualifications, yeah. uh, no, 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 no finance-related uh, qualifications, yeah. like no degree, no diploma yeah. whatsoever. Right. But the thing is, after that, I never heard from the recruiter. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Second, second, uh, second interview that I went for was uh, with a hedge fund company. So it was for operations role. Right. So I was thinking like, ah, this is like the perfect role for me to get started, mm. learn how the hedge fund really works. Yeah. Right. So they, they were not a very big company, very, just a very small outfit. And what happened was I passed through the first round of interview and I was selected for the second interview. Mm. And I was very excited for it. I was like, I'm going to crush it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I went for a second interview and they were very impressed as well. And they were telling me that, you know, um, Mike, we will get back to you. It's, we, we find that you're a good fit. It's just that we have one more candidate to interview. Yeah. Right? But we'll get back to you by next week. So as usual, I do my all my thank you email after that. 
And one week later, as I emailed them, and I never heard from them again, despite being told that I'm a good fit. Damn, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, was, it was pretty disappointing and very demoralizing during those three months. I was just sending and sending, sending out applications one after another. I, I didn't know anything else what, what I had to do other than send my you know, resumes mm-hmm. through yeah. the, the job portals, things like that. I, I didn't know anything because the schools never taught us how to do it. Right? Yeah. Schools never even taught us that we had to go through job portals. In fact, um, when, I, when I was doing part-time work uh, after I graduated from my O-levels, I, I, all my part-time jobs were through referrals. Right. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I did one uh, factory work, like, which was through the newspaper. Like. And okay. nobody really taught us how to, how to, you know, how to uh, apply for job portals. Yeah, how to apply for jobs. Yeah. And schools never prepared us for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what happened after that was, um, during those three months, I started to panic already because I've never been unemployed. Never. Okay. Like, it was... Yeah. Uh, it was something that I cannot imagine because I thought yeah. that I could get a job easily. So about three weeks before my last day, about three weeks, I started to panic even more already. Yeah. And then I started thinking like, okay, how, how should I go forward, right? Yeah, and I started thinking about all my financial commitments. It was bringing me a lot, a lot of stress. Yeah. A lot of stress. So what, um, so a thought came into my mind because I had to clear leave uh, days where I went back to office and then uh, because... Uh, I have to say I'm pretty lucky because I've always been, you know, putting in my 100% at work. Yeah. And some of my superiors like me and then they were saying that, you know, hey, don't go lah, stay. You know, stay, don't go. So that, that thought creeped into my mind. Yeah. I started thinking, like, oh man, I, it makes me feel appreciated as well. Yeah. Right. So uh, then one day I just decided, okay, maybe that's, a, that's an option that I can consider. But mm. uh, there's a lot of things that I would have to bear, a lot of things that I have to face, right? Uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not easy because of the ego, the face. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, one day I just decided, like, I texted my boss, say I want to meet him. Mm. So I texted my boss and I told him that, uh, when I met him, I told him that, uh, sir, I want to withdraw my resignation if that's possible. Mm. I, I didn't know whether it's possible or not, but I just decided to test my luck. And, uh, and he, was, he was very helpful uh, throughout this whole process. And he was asking me, like, okay, um, how, okay, I can help you, but how long do you want to stay? So mm-hmm. I was saying maybe one to two years. La. And he was telling me, one to two years, then forget it. <laughs> then inside my mind, I was thinking, then I, I just asked him, uh, how long do you want me to stay? He said, about three to four years at least. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, oh, three to four years. You know, I was already feeling so demoralized already, so, so disappointed, so drained from this whole thing. But I told myself, okay, let's get my job back first. Maybe in, and I know for sure, in three to four years time, he wouldn't even be my boss anymore because we changed bosses <laughs> every, every one to two years, right? Yeah, so, so I, I decided to, to, to just take my job back first. So that was the easy part. But the tough part was after I withdrew my resignation because uh, I... I used to be a very, very poor communicator, mm. right? Uh, and I was always very by the book. Mm. So a lot of people didn't like me. Mm. I mean, among my colleagues. My superiors liked me because I got the job done. Mm. But my yeah. colleagues, my colleagues, you know, they, they just didn't like me, yeah, right? Uh, so, yeah. yeah, so that was the part that was the worst. How do I reconnect with my colleagues? Yeah. Because they were talking behind my back all the time. And you say, cannot find a job outside. And then you treat this place like a yeah. playground. You can come whenever you want to come. You want to leave, you leave. Yep. Yeah, so, so that was the thing that I had to deal with. Uh, but inside my mind, I was thinking like, I mean, I can't convince them just by uh, arguing with them. The best way I can do is to, you know, communicate better and let my work do the talking. Mm. And that, that was what happened. Uh, I'm very blessed. I have also um, bosses who like me. Uh, I, my relationship with my colleagues started to improve because I gave a more personal touch to it. Mm-hmm. And also, um, what happened was I actually uh, got promoted every earliest opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right? And I stayed for four years. Now, mm-hmm. this whole thing made me realize something. This whole thing made me realize that, you know, I've been taking my career for a ride. I've never really planned for my career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was where I started. That was also the day where I started thinking that I need to take charge of my career, man. I can't let someone take the steering wheel and steer me around. 
I got to take control of the steering wheel and steer and go to the destination that I want to go to. Because previously, I never had a destination. Right? If you don't have a destination, you will never be, know how to get there. Yeah. Yeah, and that was, I was started thinking, do I really want to go to finance? Maybe yes, maybe no. But what was, my, what was that mission that I wanted to do? Mm. Right? And the mission was to be able to help someone, to inspire someone. Right? And I mean, there were things that I did in the military. Uh, I mean, I, I love my job. Yeah. But I was not super motivated because there was, it was not something that was uh, super meaningful. Uh, it, it will probably see tangible meaningfulness uh, when we go to war, uh, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not the outcome that I want. Yeah. Right? So what happened, I started searching. Right? Along the way, what happened was also my wife was receiving a lot of requests uh, from her friends to help with uh, writing resumes and CVs. Oh, okay. So I like, well, like, hey, let's... let's Less. And she was getting frustrated because her friends keep asking her and say, ah, maybe I told her, you maybe you should charge for this. Yeah. And she was saying, ah, yeah, maybe. Uh, and then she set up a Soprop, a company, right? She started doing that. And then I told her, hey, why not we add more value to people? How can we add more value to people? I say, maybe you can prepare them for interviews. Hmm. Yeah. In instead of just writing resume, you know, there's tons of writing, uh, resume writing services out there. And say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but how, how to do that? Uh, she, she's been through a lot of interviews. In fact, she loves going for interviews because she loves the challenges. And so, uh, she, what my expertise is, I was always very interested in human behavior as well. Yeah. So, what I started to do was, I went into, uh, take up a lot of courses, things like that, and we started helping people in their careers. Mm. And subsequently, in 2017, uh, I had the opportunity to, to make the transit. And this is another story again. Uh, I was starting to feel like I'm ready to leave already. I'm ready to take that next leap. However, I, it wasn't super, super clear. I just know that I want to help people. Right? So one day while I was walking to my parents' place, was about five minutes away for dinner, uh, after work, I started thinking like, okay, what's the next step? The uh, next step is to leave the Air Force. Yeah. Suddenly, I, I felt this, this intense fear within me. Yeah. What if nobody wants me again? I've already had one bad experience. Am I going to go back and ask for my resignation, withdraw my resignation back again? So that was one constant worry. And then this thought flashed into my mind. I asked this question to myself. What if I didn't leave the Air Force and I continued staying until my retirement age of 50? Mm. What, that, that fear became even stronger. Mm. Suddenly, I felt like, oh. I needed to do something. After dinner, I went back. I was looking through job portals again. You see, job portals. <laughs> yeah, but this time, this time it was positive because I, I saw a role that, you know, just kind of, it just sh shouted at me. It was a career coach role with the government. Mm. So I just applied for it. You know, I just nice. I had someone who, who was in the organization who I knew, made the referral. Very quickly, I got the job. Mm. And that was my journey as a career coach. And that, that was how my journey as a career coach started helping people in their career officially. Right? Before that, it was just through the, the company where we were helping people write resumes and then preparing them for interviews, things like that. Yeah. And that was where I started realizing the power of LinkedIn. And during the, that process of getting hired uh, as in the career coach role, I was starting to make use of LinkedIn already. Yeah. Yeah. That was where I started. And then I used it as a research tool. It was so good. Right, I can tell you, because how I use LinkedIn to prepare for my interviews, and this is for anybody who's going for interviews soon, right? This is how you can make full use of LinkedIn. So I went to search for the interviewer's name. So before that, uh, I was lucky. This, this, uh, the HR who, who emailed me, told me who I am going to be interviewing with. Right? Right. So one tip, if someone were to ask you for an interview, always ask the person, who am I interviewing with? Mm. Right? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with knowing. Right? And once you know, you can go onto LinkedIn and do some research about them. Yeah. What I did when I uh, went onto LinkedIn was I took down notes. Right? What is this person? What did he write in his profile summary whatsoever? Yeah. So it kind of gave me an idea what are his values and beliefs. Mm. Right? What are things that are important to him? Yeah. So I copied them down. So during the interview, what happened was I, I had all this in mind mm. and I scoped the way I present myself to the, you know, to those keywords that he was, he was, that he believed in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so you increase the likability at the first interview. Yeah. Yeah. And even this is, even if you haven't touched LinkedIn for 
long time, you, you are not active on LinkedIn. Yeah. This is how it can be helpful for you. And it was helpful to me. It was instrumental in helping me to securing that role. Mm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I went into that role. I, it was a steep learning curve as well because uh, I, I didn't know much, right? Uh, and I was very grateful to my previous organization for accepting me for someone with, without corporate experience. Uh, and it's just based on that limited experience. So I, I grew a lot. Uh, I was there for 10 months, but during that 10 months, I grew a lot. Uh, I started putting myself out of my comfort zone because this is also one of my values. Yeah. One of my values is I cannot do something that I have, I cannot preach something or tell people to do something without me going through it first. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just feels very hypocritical to me. I mean, if you, there's one thing that uh, irritates me most is, you know, uh, people that say one thing but does the other. Very hypocritical. They have never done it, but they say how good it is, how good it is. Mm. Yeah. So, so that, that irks me. And what happened was I decided to, you know, uh, I learned from all my colleagues who yeah. were much more senior than me. What were they doing, right? Uh, and then they were saying, oh, okay, what you have to do is you have to go for networking. So I went networking. Yeah. And I, I myself, I'm a very introverted person. I <laughs> never even go for networking for my adult life. Yeah. I decided, okay, let's just go and see, see what happens. Yeah. Because I have to experiment it for my clients. Mm -hmm. How am I going to tell my clients to go networking, but I've never gone for networking before. It yeah. just doesn't sound right. And the other thing that was kept being repeated over and over again was, you need to use LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, like, oh, use LinkedIn, okay. Uh, uh, how do I actually guide people how to use LinkedIn? Because mm -hmm. what happens is that a lot of times people only go through the technical part of how to use LinkedIn. Either they use it as a job portal or you know, they just use it to connect with people, but they don't fully leverage what can be done on the platform. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was thinking like, okay, this seems like a gap even among my colleagues. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were just using LinkedIn, the search function, right? how to search with the correct person to connect, but they were not building what I call, so something that, that um, what I would call uh, currently that a lot of people do, right? especially among the group of uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, we call it, um, you know, attracting leads, uh, attraction model yeah. right, for your business. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like, how can I bring that to career as well? Can you have, um, can you build such uh, structure such that you have attraction base towards your expertise that people want to hire you yeah. as a career? Right. So I started thinking there must be a possibility how we can do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I dive deep into learning, you know, the, the things about LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, that was my journey. And I just kept learning and learning uh, how I can better leverage the platform. Because at, at the end of the day, it is just a platform. But mm -hmm. it is how we behave our, on the platform and how do we brand ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's what I call career branding. And we hear, hear a lot about personal branding whatsoever. Yeah. You know, branding, corporate branding. But what exactly is career branding? And I mean, this is the online part of career branding. How do you showcase your expertise? I mean, most people, most corporate professionals, they don't exactly showcase their expertise. Yeah. They don't know where they can showcase their expertise except within the company. Yeah. Right? And if you don't let it be shown outside of the company, and most times traditional, the conventional way uh, is, or oh, I go for conferences, law, then maybe I'm invited as the speaker, and then that's where I am being seen that as the expert, as a thought yeah. leader. That's where I attract opportunities. Yeah. But how am I going to attract opportunities if I am never going to be on that stage? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's how I thought that, you know, this is how people can start building. Because LinkedIn is the stage itself. Yeah. Right? And where people can start discovering who you are, what your real expertise is. Hey, wow. Mike, thanks for the sharing, man. So I think really like, Thank you for being so open with what happened way back in the past, whether was it that, that so-called that failure to get that job when you first wanted to quit, right? Going back, right? Having the colleagues to talk about you, everything. But actually, I'm just curious, I thought your story, if I go on to the specific LinkedIn and the strategies, right, that I'm, I'm sure you're going to share, is like, what, how did you kind of like find out that um, like you wanted to do a lot more of your life, whether was it like to help people, inspire people, like what, what was the thing, like you said, attended some causes, right? So I'm sure like, can you just share a bit about how did that, that part of you come about. Because a lot of people, I'm sure they want to get started on a lot of things, right? Um, like, yes, you did it the first time, you kind of failed. But at the same time, right? Like, there are some people who want to, but they ultimately don't. So what was the one that kind of like, to push you? Or what was the thing that was driving you in the, in, like when you first started? Man? Mm, yeah, so um, there was this point where I started getting into personal development. Uh, mm. It started in 2009. Yeah, oh. 2009 after I, 
I broke up with my ex-girlfriend. Mm. Right? Uh, so what happened was I started thinking like, okay, I, I need to work on myself. I was in a toxic relationship. Uh, I didn't like the, the space that I was in uh, mm. with my ex-girlfriend, what happened was that uh, I wanted to move forward. I wanted to progress. I wanted to do more in life. Yeah. But she was just content with, you know, just a simple job uh, mm. and not seeking uh, progress. Yeah. So I, there was this urge for me to want to do more. Yeah. And uh, when I commissioned as an officer in 2010, I started and said, okay, I have this amount. I, I'm getting a stable salary now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start attending courses. So I attended a lot of courses. Every year I was attending courses from 2010 onwards. Mm. Right? And uh, I guess one of the turning points was also in 2009. Mm. Uh, one of the you know, late nights, I was just surfing around on YouTube. And then you know, on the YouTube, there's always the suggested videos, even yeah. back then. Right? And there was this, this video on the site and it says TED Talk. Right? Yep. And it, has a, it had a very, very interesting title, mm. video title. It's mm. called Why We Do What We Do. Mm. And it was by Tony Robbins. Yeah, yeah, I, I watched it. Yeah, very <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, where you talk about the six needs, right? The, the six needs of people. Mm. I was like, wow, uh, how come this person like so familiar? Like I've heard, but he makes so much sense, mm. right? And, and that got me on the journey of self development. And I started, you know, 2010, I attended courses. I attended uh, Patterns of Excellence from Adam Koo. Yep. That was that was uh, quite a quite a good uh, quite a good start to my career. That was the first course after I started my career. Nice. Um, uh, I, I I felt it was a good course. I, I learned a lot of NLP principles, uh, yep. a lot of self development principles uh, and habits. Mm. However, um, it was there there were things which I felt were not so um, applicable to me because uh, it seems like it was a course for people who were very troubled. Uh, yeah. you know, I was going there where I wanted to kickstart my career with a boom. Yeah. yeah. How, how do I achieve uh, peak performance? Because I started to uh, watch a lot of Tony Robbins videos. So I was like, peak performance, things like that. Yeah. So, but what, what happened was that, I mean, those principles served me well. Uh, but more importantly, I also met my, one of my mentors in 2010. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I went to learn from uh, Conrad, Conrad Alvin Lim. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he teaches uh, how, how to trade. Uh, yeah. Finance and economics, basically it was a very holistic course. He was way before his time yeah. um, teaching about macroeconomics uh, beyond just the technicals of trading. Yeah. Right? So um, that was where I started learning, not just trading from him, because I, start, because I wanted to be associated with him a lot. Yeah. Because I like his values, the way he, he inspires people and, I, and I, his story as well. So I decided, you know, I, I'm going to do whatever I can to be as close to this person as possible because I want to learn. Mm. I mean, the best way to learn from someone who's successful is to model after them and be as close to them as possible. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that was how Tony Robbins was able, because he was following Jim Ron around. Yeah. And so, I, so I wanted to be something like that. So I was hanging out a lot, a lot with him and I learned a lot of um, human I don't know, principles of how to be uh, a better person. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and he inspired me a lot inspired me a lot on how, how to be a better person. Mm. Uh, and also that, that was, I mean, my wife was working as, uh, was marketing his program back then with Adam Koo and that was how I met my wife as well. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, but, but more importantly, that was, um, I mean, following under him, um, seeing the way he teach, the way he coaches other people and that kind of inspired me that, you know, maybe this is what I wanted to do. Right? Because at that point, before that, before 2013, all I wanted to do was to, go into the finance industry, partly also influenced by him. Yeah. But after that, I started thinking, you know, I, I just put myself back and I asked, okay, what, what is my real life mission? What is it that I really want to do? Okay. Mm. And I was spending a lot of time just volunteering my time in his program, in Conrad's program. I was thinking, mm. that actually, what really drives me is not, you know, the, the finance part, yeah. helping people, teaching them how to trade, things mm. like that. But it's more of inspiring them and helping them to lead a better life. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that was where I, you know, that whole episode allowed me to see things clearer. Mm. That you know, I don't have to be like Conrad, but I can be like him, in a way where I can inspire people, live a better life, inspire people to live a better life. Mm. Yeah, and that that was how how I I got to, um, where you know that that, that turning point. There are a few turning points along the way. Yeah. yeah. 
And I believe that in life we have, you know, we're going to have multiple turning points where yeah. we're going to find our mission. That mission becomes clearer and clearer mm, over time. Yeah, hey, I, I love I love what you share, man. So thanks for sharing. Like, as you wanting to model after a uh, Conrad, right? And I think something great that you did, right? So like, I'm I'm damn happy you mentioned it, which is that you actually volunteered your time there, right, to be helping and everything to just get close to him if possible. Because uh, um, my my uh, my thing is like, so my conversation with a lot of people who are starting on their careers, right, is they they always, they understand that hey, I need to get a mentor, I need someone to I can learn from. But when you ask them to oh like well, how about you like just help out the person for free that sort of stuff some of them get a bit resistant but like, the fact that you did it right I'm sure that really helped you a lot in terms of your development man. so thanks thanks for sharing that Mike alright so let's move on now to the stage of like your your core your expertise right now in the whole career branding space and all so can I, so I think just to start off right can you share a bit about what do you think are the most common mistakes right when people who want to get into LinkedIn right when they when they get started right what do you think are some of the most common mistakes that people make right and maybe some of the quick tips right based on the mistakes that they've made and we'll get started from there yeah um so i mean I, i've done quite a few um interviews videos on uh, the common mistakes uh but I, I i wouldn't really touch on the very fundamental ones uh, uh because those are things that you can find on google whatsoever yeah, easily, right? And I've done interviews where I talk about all those, like your mm -hmm. profile, things like that. We, let's let's move beyond the profile. Okay. Right? Uh, if you if you want to, if you really want to know how to best do up your profile, I mean that is the funda fundamental, right? Yeah. Really basic one. But what most people do, you know, when they want to get really started, they say that okay, LinkedIn is gonna be the the platform that's gonna allow me to showcase my expertise, and they know that yes, I must create content. Yeah, because everybody is shouting content is king content is king I need to create content so what happens is that most people yeah. in fact I was a victim of it yeah. uh, I wouldn't say victim right I, I, I made the same mistake I made the same mistake right, of just creating content and just sharing and sharing and sharing but the thing is if nobody knows you then nobody is going to engage with your content and nobody is going to see you for expertise Right. So I was sharing content, I was like, how come no engagements? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the key thing is, the number one thing that you have to get right uh, is always the mindset. Yep. The mindset of being on social media, of giving value. A lot of people think that give, writing content and sharing content is giving value. Mm -hmm. That's not wrong. Mm -hmm. right. But if I were to draw you back to the intention, right, the intention, is it really giving or is it receiving? Right. What are you looking to get or oh. give? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you see, the thing is, when you post, when you post a piece of content, right, what's the first thing that you're expecting? A lot of times, a lot of times people they are, oh, you know, they they will, they have this uh, very altruistic side to them, which will say that, oh, because I just want to share my knowledge, my expertise. Yeah. yeah. If nobody engaged with them, you know how they feel. They feel like, maybe people don't value my expertise. <laughs> yeah. So you can see where, where the expectations is. The expectations is in uh, that people actually are expecting to receive. Mm. Mm. Right? Can you imagine every time you post something uh, and then you get notification pop up on your phone. Then ting, ting, ting. It's like, wow, got people comment, got people like, wow. And then you feel good, you know, endorphins. <laughs> right? Yeah, you feel good, right? The thing is, if we were to take this mindset uh, and to pull ourselves out of the situation uh, and to really think from the other person's perspective, let's say if you want to engage with someone, someone who's influential, someone who may open doors for you, yeah. right, how do you think you can really give value to this person? Hmm. Instead of just... The easiest way? Hmm. Yeah. The easiest way is to just give value to their post. Make them happy first. Right? That is the real giving. Hmm not sharing your content right? mm. the real crux of giving uh, is really you know just going to engage on people's posts and add value on people's posts mm. and you do that right number one you make people feel good right people remember you better right and then your visibility increase because they are more likely to want to engage with your posts mm. next so when you start you know, you go and talk to, you, 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 are in, you become interested in other people, right? Just go, you know, add value here, everywhere. The moment you start posting straight away, right, people will start to take notice already. Yeah. And that is, when you are commenting on someone's post, uh, you are purely giving, mm -hmm. right? And the beauty, the beauty of all this is, 
you know, everybody loves to receive, right? Yeah. And the, the, the thing is, you just give people what they love, right? Yeah. And, right? Zig Ziglar said this, right? you, you can get anything you want in life as long as you help people get the, what they want in life. Yeah. It's the exact same principle. Mm. People love to receive, you just help them to receive more first and they are more likely to want to engage back on your post. Right? And one other advantage of just commenting on other people's posts, right? one other headache of content creation is what content do I create? People always run out of content to create. When you comment on other people's posts, you don't even need to think that much about what content to create. People already create the content for you. You just have to give your views on it. Right? And when you give your views on it, that is content in itself as well. And you know what you can do with that, com that, that comment that you have commented? You will find that this is of superb value, right? Yeah. This can translate to a post itself. Yeah. You don't even have to think of content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that, that would, I would say is the number one mistake mm -hmm. that most people make. Right? They think that by posting content is giving. Yeah. Yes, it is giving only after it passes a certain point of time. Mm -hmm. After, you know, uh, people already are receiving your mm -hmm. information. But if people are not receiving your information, you are not giving any value at all. Yeah. 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 Um, second mistake that I see most people make is that they, you know, they just go around. Yes, they take that message. I have to go and comment on people's posts. Right? This is like the next problem that most people face. <laughs> yeah. They comment. Right? They go around giving very, you know, comments that doesn't add much value. Is that generic, yeah? Is that, yeah. Yeah. They, they, uh, they go out with, uh, with comments like, oh, uh, true. Good post, agree, right? Mm. But it doesn't add any value to the discussion in the post. And like, you know, one of the best ways uh, for you to increase your visibility uh, is through comments on other po others' posts. Mm. Because every time someone, were, someone else were to look at a post and they, other than looking at a post itself, they look at the comments. And when they want to comment, they, most people will look at the comments first to see, see that, hey, have somebody else raised the same point? I don't want to look stupid by posting the same point as well. Mm -hmm. That's what most people do. Right? And can you imagine if people look through your posts and then uh, look through the comments, other people's post comments and see that, hey, oh, this guy has a very insightful comment, has a, this perspective that is very, very different. Mm -hmm. oh, you're going to stand out straight away. You're going to get a lot of likes on that comment and you're going to get people who is going to come to you, connect with you. Right? And when people come and connect with you, and all these are organic, you don't even have to go out and connect intentionally with people. Yeah. yeah. And you, you are basically attracting people towards you. Right? So it's always, uh, when, when I talk about it, it's always attraction-based. But attraction-based doesn't mean, you know, uh, you just sit there, do nothing, and the people will come. You have to make an effort to attract people. And you, when you do that, it's only by giving the solid value. Mm. Yeah. So most people go around just, you know, uh, giving very frivolous comments. Yeah. yeah. I, I usually, I take a lot more time because uh, I, I like to add that personal touch, mm. right? And I don't want to give um, comment that, uh, if, you, if you look at the way I create my content at times as well, I don't like to give uh, very common sense kind of comments, mm. right? Things that you can find on uh, YouTube, you can find on Google, wherever, right? Because um, what's the point? We are kind of like insulting people's intelligence if we had to tell them something that is easily searchable, that is easily available, or they might already know. Mm. Right? The key thing is, how do I, inside my mind, I'm always thinking, right, because I'm, I'm NLP trained, that this, this, this point is inside my head. And the question I always ask is, how can I create a pattern interrupt where people you know, can, can really feel the crux of the message through the way I phrase the words. It could be a very common sensical thing, but I phrase it very differently. Or what I'll do is I'll give very, very practical steps. I'm sure you have seen a lot of posts where they ask for advice. Right? And a lot of times, if, be it on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or any other social media, a lot of times people like to give those very generic advice. Generic, yeah. Yeah, yeah very generic, you know, a very condescending kind of advice. Yeah. So what I do is I give very, very practical step-by-step -step examples and advice. Mm -hmm. That is real giving value. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when that, that is where the person of the post are, who you commented on, they will start thinking like, wow, this guy is solid. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is what you want for your branding. Mm -hmm. you, you not only make the guy whose post you commented on feel good, you make mm -hmm. the 
his connections, right? Because mm. the, the strength of LinkedIn is that uh, you, you see a lot of the comments on your uh, people who are not connected as first, connect, uh, first level connections. Mm. Yeah. In fact, the whole algorithm is geared towards you connecting with more people, which is why on your news feed, what you see is actually not a lot of your first connection posts, first level connection yeah. posts. Yeah. It's actually your second level connections posts, but your first level connection either like the post or commented on the post. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The key thing is to expose you to your second level connection so that you can have a wider reach. Mm. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, so to I, I think those two things alone were like damn powerful, man. Like, like for sure, like first, even on Facebook, right? Like, I, I know one, one, one guy, like I have one guy in mind, right? Like, like he doesn't really write a lot of posts, but all he does is comment like crazy, man. And because of that, like, like I noticed him, some of my mentors himself noticed that, and it's not really crazy. And he put just the fact that he, commented but then I think uh, what I, I guess the guy I'm thinking of right to do better next is then to share a lot more based on what you said like like original uh, content original thoughts like any own person and such. I think that's damn super powerful man like, like it's something that I myself like hey I think I could have done more as well so I think thanks thanks for sharing that man so then I think I just want to lead up to like based on what you shared right the first two things which is that so when when like how do I know when is the like a good time to post or when do I know that hey when I start posting this might be something useful, right? So you want to talk about like an initial space, right? I, I'm not sure you might want to give like, a, hey, is it like the first three months, first six months? Like I can start uh, commenting, posts and start creating engagement. Like when do I know that, hey, maybe it's time to start creating original content on my own, right? Just based on your own perspective. Mm, yeah, so uh, I don't have a specific timeline per se, right? Yeah. But the key thing is to experiment. Mm. The key thing is to experiment, right? I would say when you're just start starting out, you probably take the 80-20% rule. Right? Yeah. You probably just post once per week, that's fine. Use yeah. the rest of the four days you know, uh, to really go and comment on other people's posts, engage on other people's posts, to get people to know you. And then you just post once per week. And then once you see that your engagement starts getting higher, mm. you, can, you, can just, uh, you can just increase the frequency. Mm. Right? In fact, uh, as a start, the... F- what I usually always tell people to do, and this is quite controversial, right? Okay. When you are just starting, right? Don't post every day. Mm, mm. Because what's going to happen is you're not going to get engagements. Yeah. You're going to feel very demoralized. Yeah. You're going to feel so bad about yourself. You feel that you are so good at your subject matter, but nobody appreciates it. And that's yeah. why most people actually uh, think that, you know, this not platform cool. is not useful. Yeah. It's not useful, right? Yeah, people get demoralized. And I've seen so many examples over the past two years. Right, people get demoralized and then they just stop doing. They were just posting every day. They, they say that as long as I keep posting every day, I will get. But they don't make the effort to go and engage others. Mm-hmm. And that, that is the biggest issue. Yeah. And what happens is that when you post every day, after a while you run out of content already. Yeah. Because your expertise, how much can you can you share? Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, there's a limit to how much you can share. However, what you can do is you can spin different angles for each subject matter expertise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's how you can create many more content, right? But more importantly is don't post every day at the start, right? Mm. Post once per week, you know, that's fine. Slowly increase the frequency. Yeah. yeah. Now, then the question is, what if I post something, you know, and it doesn't really work? I don't have a lot of engagements. Mm. I always tell my clients, right, who, who engage me to coach them to get a better job through LinkedIn, mm. things like that, right? Uh, when they have very, very good posts, I tell them, Good news is you got very good engagements, everything. Uh, you want to know what's the bad news? Yeah. The bad news is by the weekend, nobody remembers your post. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. So even if you have a bad post, you don't want to know what's the good news? Yeah, the no, good news is yeah. by the weekend, nobody remains, remembers your post already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you work on the next thing. Yeah. Right? So the, the key thing is you don't have to feel lousy for too long. Yeah. Right? As long as you know that you're giving value to others, mm. right? slowly, you'll see that one day you are going to craft one post that's going to go exponential. And that's for some of my clients as well. Some is like instant, right? Those instant ones, I'm a bit afraid for them because they get complacent faster. Ah, yeah. Right? And then there are those who are nothing, nothing, not much, not much, then suddenly have one post that almost like go viral, those kind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they, you know, the moment you hit that tipping point, uh, yeah, and you just kind of shoot up, right? What happens is that your subsequent posts, right? You have significant uh, engagements, really. Higher level of engagement. Because right? people start noticing you already. Yeah. And every time, you know, 
people have this thing about impression. Once they have this impression about you, right, every time you post something, uh, you are like, oh, you're like the, the thought leader. And that's how thought leadership works. Yeah. Right? And the key thing is, if you are going to continue to to do that, right, that's going to help you in the long term, in the long run. Yeah. For sure. Hey, thanks, thanks. I think thanks for that. I think that's a damn, like, like, um, important perspective, right? So the thing is, like, I do, I do also a lot of people that are right now, especially like as this one interview, like the COVID situation, a lot of people have more time, right? They're writing out posts and content, but uh, I guess most of them, yeah, they aren't getting engagement as they want. And like you said, man, it's like because like if people don't really notice you from the start, like you keep writing a post, right? Nobody's going to really go and listen. You're gonna get more, right? So I think it's a very uh. Like people more more people you hear that man right so so I think that thanks for that so I think moving on right can I share like right now uh, during this period like um like currently like how many um coaches do you have like how many students have you taught over over this period of time like can you just share some some quick numbers just for reference okay so um I run my business a little bit differently so it's an ecosystem yeah right uh so uh, my business is based on three M mm. right uh first M is mindset right yeah. so I I I do my personal coaching to, to help people to improve their mindset. Hmm. Second is uh, money management. So that's where my, my role as a financial advisor come in. I'm also a financial advisor with Prudential, yeah. where I help people to manage their finances. And the third one is mastery, right, yeah. where I have another business partnership with uh, uh, my business partner to do training for companies. Yeah. And so my coaching actually comes under the mastery, but I don't just, you know, my, my clients, I don't just serve them in one vertical. I serve them across different verticals. Yeah. yeah. So what I do is I my my clients with Prudential, I also coach them. It's just that I don't have a fixed most of them I don't have a fixed coaching program. So yeah. what happens is that some of my Prudential clients, how they want to make best use of me is after they become my clients, yeah. they can contact me anytime. Yeah. So I have a few clients, uh, they just come to me and say that uh, I need to talk to you. So this happened last year. One of my clients came to me. I need to speak with you. I said, okay, that sounds a bit uh, serious. Okay, let's, let's, let's meet and chat. So what happened was he was feeling demoralized mm. because uh, he, he didn't get the promotion that he expected. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I spoke with him, you know, uh, he's not that much on LinkedIn. He's, he, he's present on LinkedIn, but he doesn't post as much. Yeah. So uh, what I did was I helped him with, because his end goal is to get that promotion. Yeah. Right? So I have to think, like what is the best way to serve him? It's yeah. not through online career branding. Uh, yeah. It's offline. Right? So how do I help him do that? So mm. I strategize with him. Right? Uh, he works with one of the big four consulting firms. Mm. And what happened was, I helped him raise his visibility. We, we came up with strategies on how to raise his visibility to, to his boss. Right? So their, their appraisal uh, is kind of like, uh, who does more billable projects? Mm. than the non-billable projects. So previous year, he was doing more non-billable projects. Yeah. So after strategizing with him, right, the next month, he got a billable project. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's how he... Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yes. So um, my, my coaches come from... So I have also have clients who are dedicated just coaching only. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I have a few of them with me right now. Uh, I even have one that is 60 year old right now. Wow. Uh, which is yeah. quite... Uh, it, it, I mean, I was a bit worried lah. A bit yeah. apprehensive uh, about taking on this client, yeah. but um, because it's a huge challenge. Because sixty years old is is not easy to to find a job. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I we we can talk about all the nice things. Uh, as long as you can add value, uh, people will hire you. Things like that. But sixty years old, we gotta look at the practical side of things. As employers, you are thinking, this guy got how much runway left? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the key thing is, you know, uh, I just take up that this challenge because I think that he has value to give. Mm. Right. And he has run his own business before. He has experience which is valuable. Right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's for, let's say, a year or two as a consultant, contract consultant, I think there is a possibility for him. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, I've been working with him over the past four to five months. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And his, his presence on LinkedIn is, he far exceeds me. Far exceeds oh. me in terms of engagements, you know, the connections that he has made. Uh, and he gets opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. And he gets to choose. Yeah, yeah. He has, yeah. even has recruiters calling him. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy, lah. Mm. Because most recruiters don't call people who are in their sixties already. It's like you call me younger and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, because they they will probably look for someone much younger, mm. right? And the key thing is because he has built a brand on LinkedIn, 
Yeah. Uh, he has recruiters calling him. He got other connections who are offering him jobs. There are mm. people who are uh, engaged, who you know, have a chat with him, and then he's thinking like, uh, you know, I uh, want to get into a business partnership, things like that. Okay. And nowadays, uh, when I want, uh, instead of him looking for me uh, for the next coaching session, mm. I'm actually asking him, uh, when do you want to do the next session? Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's having more calls than me sometimes. Yeah. I ask him, hey, can we, in fact, I just communicated with him this morning. I asked him, uh, uh, is, is Tuesday, uh, previously we arranged Tuesday, but I had a, I was double booked, right? Yeah. So I asked him like, um, is afternoon okay? He said, afternoon cannot, uh, afternoon I got a few Zoom meetings. It's like, yeah. wow. He's like very busy for a 60 year old who is unemployed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, so this, 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 uh, some of my coaches, I have a few, so, uh, most of them, they are working in stable jobs. Yeah. Right? And they are m- looking to move or, to, to increase, um, to move to the next level. Yeah, okay. yeah. So previously when I was in the government, I was mainly helping people who have lost their job. We're struggling. Um, and, yeah. Struggling. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, I still have clients who are like that, which is why I took on the 60-year-old right, mm-hmm. and a few others. But my, my main focus is uh, helping people because I feel that this is a group that is uh, not very well served. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, if they, want to, if they want to transit in their career, uh, there are not many people who is helping them. The government, the focus has been on the people who are unemployed. Yeah. 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 The, the funds are really channeled that way right. and uh, they have very little help. Uh, yeah. And I, I position myself as the go-to guy in this space so yeah. that, you know, when, if you want to find ways to increase your income mm-hmm. through your career, that's what our strategies. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that you, uh, like, let's say, like, you're doing financial planning, right? But at the same time, you also position yourself in multiple ways. So that, hey, like, yes, I do provide value uh, in terms of, like, financial planning, which is probably, as in, we, we do know that it's rather commoditized, right? But you actually add value with your own, like, coaching, whether it's your mindset or even on coaching itself. So I think that's great, right? For sure. So I think then, uh, I think moving on, right? So, like, what I say, like, the uh, 60-year-old uh, gentleman and some of your other coaches. So what do you think are some of the, the traits and characteristics, right, of, your coaches, right, of your students who actually achieve way faster and higher success versus those, right, versus those that, like, they might have the desire, right, but they're still not at the area or, or the level of goals that you want. Like, what do you think are the difference, at least in your own um, observations? Mm. Um, I think you, you are probably the best, best example of someone who will succeed <laughs> based on your tagline. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I can only say that the people who really, really uh, were to take action. I mean, this this is really from experience with all the coaches, right? And I can tell you, uh, I just give you two examples. One is my coach, who is a 60, 60 year old man, right? He's been doing phenomenal phenomenal things because every day he's out there, you know, commenting on people's posts. He's out there creating content. He doesn't create content every day. Yeah. Right? He does about twice a week, mm. but he get like mad kind of engagements, yeah. right? Yeah. He's close to 100 comments on in his comments one, every time. Right? Wow. wow. Compared to one of my other clients who I'm still um, doing my best to motivate her, yeah. helping her to see results. Lah. So she's not that active on, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Right? She's not that active on LinkedIn. Uh, however, I help her see how it can help her just by revamping her profile. Yeah. We worked on her profile, right? Uh, instead of just putting out the boring profile that uh, profile summary that most people have, you know, like as if it's a resume, I help her change it into a story. Yeah. Brought her career story in. Mm. Help her change the photo. Mm. Right. And then she started getting uh, inquiries from recruiters really. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. So I help her see some results. Like you see, there I told her, you see, the moment you implement, yeah. right, the moment you, you do all those things that are uh, that can help you, right? Take positive actions, right? Mm. This is where you will really start to see the results. And most people, they gain confidence from results. Mm. Yeah. A lot of times, we think that, uh, this must happen before I gain confidence. Yeah, yeah. A lot, but what happens is actually is, you do already, then you gain the confidence. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. The confidence doesn't just fall out of the sky. If you're always waiting for something to increase your confidence, right? Then you'll always be stuck at where you, where you are. Right. You, you must have the internal conviction within yourself to want to do well. Yeah. Right. If you don't have that conviction, what's going to happen is you always you know, tell yourself all the stories in your head why you cannot succeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, yes. the story that you tell yourself is the most important. 
I, I always, I, and this is one phrase that when I do my trainings, I always tell uh, the participants, right? the quality of your life is determined by the questions, the quality of the questions you ask yourself on a daily basis. What kind of questions are you asking yourself? I love it, Mike. Like really, like uh, as in definitely that implementation action, right? But then again, it also boils down to what you tell yourself every day, right? So like I think definitely like what you tell yourself in terms of questions, your internal conviction, right, is going to determine your the speed of success. Like how much do you want it? And how much do you, how much you take action? So thanks for sharing that, right, Mike? Right. So I think we all right. So let's uh, so let's say you are taking on um like I think we'll try try out a different slide for me. Let's say you are. Uh, taking on a whole new coach, right? So let's say it's a young, fresh graduate, right? Just started out work, right? And uh, what would you actually have him or her do, right? So um, no, matter what, no matter what industry, let's say in the finance industry, right? If you want to get to the bank, right? If you want to be in a hedge fund, right? What would you actually have that, uh, that young graduate do, right? In the first 30 days, right? Let's say just the first 30 days, to actually get into the space where she's going to position himself much better, right? To get actually that kind of dream role that he or she would want, right? In the first okay. 30 days, yeah. So um, this is very tactical already. Uh, I'll yeah. go on the tactical wise. What, yeah. what are the things to do? The number one thing, right, is uh, not just comment on people's posts, but yeah. be very, very strategic about who you comment on, the post that you comment on. Mm. So let's say this is uh, uh, someone who's in the finance industry. Mm. What I will ask him to do is to use the search function to go and look for the people in the finance industry that are key, key opinion leaders. Mm. Right. Opinion so leader. LinkedIn has uh, this search function that you know really allows you to do very advanced search even with the free version. Okay. Now, you find all these people, you know, keep them somewhere, mm. don't connect with them. Don't connect with them first. Yeah, right? okay. Most people make the mistake of connecting with people first. Wait, wait, right? wait, wait, they either wait, wait. just send a uh, connection request. So that's, uh, I call it the three levels of connection. Mm. Three mm. levels of connection. Uh, the first level is you just click connect with the person. Yeah. Right? And then uh, the person received the request, he may or may not accept. Yeah. Right? Second level is you send a connection request, but with a personalized message. Yeah. Right? So you can do that. Uh, there are certain, uh, certain times where I do that as well, but that is not the number, number two. Yeah. That's not my first option. My first option is the third level, the yeah. advanced level, yeah. which is to influence people to connect with you. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yes. So uh, what I will ask someone you know who's fresh, really fresh, right, to even go to the third level first. Mm -hmm. right? uh, what you are gonna do is you find all these people, you know, of course you connect with all your friends, those people you know first, like, right? So you have some connections count to, to make you look more credible. Mm -hmm. right? And the next thing you want to do is to really find out all these people on LinkedIn, right? There's this special uh is is I find that this function is very, very helpful and yeah. that you can track the activity of what this person does on LinkedIn. Yeah. Right. So if he comments or likes a certain person's post, you can also see. Yeah. yeah. If this person uh, wrote his own post, you can also see. Mm. Right. So the key thing is to monitor their activities. Mm. If let's say they like another, uh, they comment on somebody else's post, you think of how, you know, take note of all these things that they mention. Mm. Right? And if you can go one more step further is to find out how you can further add on to the discussion of the comments. Mm. Mm. This, this is very, very ninja. Yeah, only, very ninja. Only, <laughs> only LinkedIn can allow you to do that. This is yeah. super, super ninja, right? Mm. Where you can add on, you know, add more value, add your perspective, alternate perspective whatsoever onto their comment, right? Yeah. Comment on their comment. Yeah. Yeah. And then on their post, you comment on their post. Yeah. This is how you influence people to connect with you because you have given value. This person is more likely mm. to want mm. to connect with you. Yeah. And even if this person doesn't connect with you, when you go, go you can drop one level down to level two. Yeah. You send a connection request with a personalized message. This person already knows you. Mm. Okay. And it's more likely to accept your request than a cold Cold request, okay. right? And then you know you, you may have a personalized message, but you know it's it's not warm. Yeah. It's still cold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you you do that first, and then yeah. same thing, go and comment on these people's posts, you know, start to build up. Right? At the end of the day, it's not about a number of connections. Mm. Uh, I, I will be very, very uh, upfront about this. I only have about three thousand connections on LinkedIn. Mm. It's not a lot compared to a lot of influencers. Yeah. Right. 
but I, 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 don't, I don't really care about the number of connections. In fact, I have a lot of connection requests which I don't accept because they're either fake profiles or they're not active. Right? But, and, and the thing is, I don't want people who are not active in my connections. Yeah, your group, your... Yeah, it, it doesn't... I mean, it's just a vanity after all. Some people believe, it, believe in being an open networker. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll accept everyone. But if this person is not going to be active, right? How is he going to add value to your network? And how are you, are you going to add value to their network? Yeah. 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 Right? And if they one day become active, what they can do is they can withdraw their request and send it again and I'll see it again and I'll accept them. So yeah. what are, one of the conditions that I that I really uh, look through when accepting a person's request is to see whether this person has activity or not. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, what are my mutual connections? Yeah, mutual connections. Yeah. So these, these are the two, two main conditions where I'm looking. Right? So for someone new, is yes, it's good to have the number, uh, get that number above 500. Because okay. LinkedIn has this, uh, you know, when you are past 500, your connections become 500 plus. Anything below is less than... Ah, oh, it looks a bit bad. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. But the thing is, I've seen people, right? I'll, I'll just quote one example. Ulysses, mm. Ulysses Wang. Mm. Yeah. He has less than 500 connections, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Right? But even he has gotten corporate gigs through LinkedIn. Mm. Right? So it's not about the, the number of connections. I have seen people with a lot of connections, but do not get anywhere near where they want to be. Right. Yep. I can tell you, uh, when I was back in my previous role um, in, in the government job as a career coach, mm -hmm. I had one client right, who, uh, who lost her job, right? came, came to us. Uh, I couldn't place her in a job before I, I leave, but mm -hmm. we are connected on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Now, after I left, I mean, his, her, I mean she, she joined part of a community, what, what we call engagement port, right? Mm -hmm. And she was getting crazy engagements, right? Every post, she was like 100 over engagements. She has mm. more connections than me. Mm. A few years down the road, as I look at her profile again, she still hasn't found a job. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, what is most important is do you get to your intended outcome? Yeah. Because those engagements will only make you feel good for a while. Mm. After all, you still feel empty. In fact, you may even feel worse. How is it that I can get so much engagement, have so many connections, but not achieve my goal on LinkedIn? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and, and that's, that's, that's very sad. Yeah, yeah. I get like, for sure, like, like people can have high engagement, like you said, it's vanity metrics, right? But people don't know what to do with it. Or people don't even have an idea, right, of how they can use it, right? Then you kind of waste that, that kind of engagement and all, right? So like, wow, I, 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 wow, I just want to say like, if you're watching this, right? So I know this recorded, but for whoever's watching this, right? Like, like what my share, right? It's freaking like powerful, right? It's something, I, I do feel there's something that I haven't heard before. So I think thanks for op sharing so openly, right? So I think that's something that I really, really uh, appreciate you appreciate you for Mike. So I think that's, that's great. Like, so I think just to, just to end off, I guess, I guess my, my funny question is like, is there anything like, um, like to end off this interview, they like to share, right? So I think uh, for my audience, most, most of them are people who are starting out in the space, right? A lot of them are driven, they are motivated. Like, is there any, like, any final word you want to say to them? And like, where can they find or learn more? Because I, like, I, 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 I'm sure that people will definitely want to find out more about you, man, after, after listening to this interview. Yeah. Um, so I guess the, the, the key thing is um, do not see LinkedIn as a job portal. That's the biggest misconception. It has become the, probably the fourth biggest uh, social media platform uh, around the world. Really. It has 600 million users. I mean, I, I don't know the exact stats. Right? Last I know is 600 million users. But if you are really, really serious about taking charge of your career and showcasing your expertise, there is no better, no better platform to do it. Right? Even if you are doing, let's say, you are doing B2B kind of yeah. sales. This is the best place. This is where you where you find that content is very, is very focused. Focus mm. on the professional context. Yeah. Right? Of course, there are people who will start sharing uh, more personal. Right? And the thing is, at the end of the day, we must know that uh, humans are humans. Right? Yeah. We have emotions. And you share certain personal things. Um, you know, as long as you can pull at the heartstrings of people, you know, trigger the emotions in people, people will, want, will like you. At the end of the day, it's about people liking you and trusting you so that they will give you the opportunity, be it for business, be it for career. Right? So um, LinkedIn is just like any other social media platform. Of course, uh, 
uh, the content wise, the best way you want to know what kind of content to post is to observe. Right? What are the uh, content that really gets uh, people a lot of engagements, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and on LinkedIn, you really need a lot more critical thinking. You need yeah, a lot more just, critical thinking. Yeah, I get it, man. <laughs> it's not just on Facebook because Facebook, at the end of the day, it's uh, much more of a more friendly, uh, fun place. Go, on yeah. LinkedIn, what happens is that you can get a lot of engagement for certain posts. Mm -hmm. and you have to really discern uh, which could be a fake high engagement. Why I say fake high engagement is like, it's because of algorithm. People trick the algorithm, mm -hmm. right? And those kind of posts, they, if you find that you didn't learn anything from the post, mm. right, those are the posts to avoid. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so that, that is one of the most important things because at the end of the day, you want to be some, seen as someone with substance. Yeah. And only the people with substance actually gets hired because at the end of the day, hiring managers look for people who have substance. They don't want someone who can only show. Yeah. They want someone who can actually do. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, to find me, uh, you can go on to my website, um, coachmikelee.com. Uh, if it helps you better to see, right, you can see it on my back. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 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 So, so there's my website. Uh, I have a free guide on how to increase your profile visibility through just changing five, five different um, areas of your profile. Right. And uh, one of, like I mentioned earlier, one of my clients has already received requests. I cannot guarantee that everybody will receive. Right. But uh, what, what will happen is that, you know, uh, this is, is what will help you to optimize your profile mm. right, and uh, help you become more visible. And the thing is, what you want to do is to create that, that want in people mm. to visit your profile. Yeah. Right? The moment people visit your profile, the chances of you attracting a certain opportunity is higher. Mm. All right, all right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike, for the sharing, man. I think like like I learned so much myself. I'm gonna implement, man. I'm gonna implement, right? So I feel like it's as for sure, like you you are using LinkedIn, right? But I'm sure you can use it on multiple other platforms as well. So I'm definitely gonna use it, implement it for myself, right? And like if you're watching this, right, like like please go use it. Man. I think this what you shared is really gold. I think it's worth like so much if you use it, right? So thanks, Mike, for the sharing, right? You're like, welcome. You're welcome. Right? So with that, we end we end uh, today's interview, right, on a uh, power LinkedIn uh, strategies and tactics, right? Jeff is going to be that powerful and I'll see you for our next interview, guys. Okay, see you. Thanks, Mark.